we'll be able to hear about two or three this afternoon or later. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I didn't have any idea what I would speak about or if I had anything of value that would help someone or anything of interest. Because I've been there 25 years, and it's probably not much that y'all haven't heard me tell you already. So I didn't know of anything new that I might say. So I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And I just couldn't come up with an answer to what I might speak about. So I decided to do something different. I said, I think I'll pray about it. I can't handle it myself. I'm going to pray about it. So while I was pr praying, I realized that when I was stumped, and I couldn't handle things myself, I'd gone to God in prayer to ask him to help me. Well, prayer is a very important thing in our lives. And as I was praying, I said, you know, I realized how important it is. I never really understood it. But it inspired me today to speak about prayer. The prayer is a very popular subject. You, you, you see it every Sunday on TV. You hear it from the pulpit. People talk about it. They pray for different things and so forth and so on. But I want to tell you in my experience, and my journey towards trying to learn about prayer. As very young children, many of us were introduced to that very, very old, old children's prayer, but now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Like many other children, I prayed that prayer every single night, primarily because my mother said I had to. And I really never understood what it meant and a lot of my friends, I don't think my age did either. But we did it because that's what we were taught to do. So, then as we grew older, we became more aware of the world. We soon found ourselves in high school. Our prayers changed to reflect what we thought was important at the time. We weren't children anymore. Now we were young teenagers. So during our high school years, we prayed about different things then. We prayed we'd pass a driver's license. Or maybe that boy or girl we liked in class would take a look at us, maybe go on a date with us. Or maybe we especially pray that mom and dad wouldn't be mad about that really bad grade we got in school. So we prayed about a lot of things that concerned us as teenagers. And also, I thought about something in high school. As I said, I was brought up in the church, in the Sunday school in the church. My two sisters were here with us today, Diane and Brenda. And uh, we all went to, went to church, but I always wondered when I was in school, we have these big sporting events, big game, basketball, whatever. And the coaches and players and all on one team, they're praying they're going to win. Another team, they pray they're going to win. Well, let's put God in a pretty tough spot. You got two two great groups of people here, and everybody wants to win. So what, so what does God do? Well, I think what he does in this case, I don't think he does anything. I think he just sits there like the rest of us and lets the best team win. God's not going to answer every prayer you want or or go your way all the time. Sometimes he doesn't answer. So, life moves on. Now we're adults. Now we have families, we're married, careers, bills to play. And prayers change again. Now we're praying for better things, more adult things, maybe a better job, a pay raise. Or maybe the topic just stopped us from running red like won't give us a ticket. We pray a lot as adults. And a lot of the prayers revolve around things that concern us and what we want for ourselves rather than others. Not that everyone does this, but most of our prayers tend to be about ourselves and for ourselves. So, I thought about my life too, and I said most of the time when I prayed, I was always praying about something that would affect me personally or maybe my family. But I didn't have a personal connection to God through prayer. Now this brings me to the point of my story. Some of you know about this, some of you don't. Six years ago, my daughter Kim began having severe headaches. We took her to a neurologist. He concluded, had some tests done and concluded that she'd had a uh, brain stroke. So this, this was pretty bad. We were just shocked by this. So he said, you need to take her right away to a Memorial Regional Hospital. So he leaves his office and heads for the Memorial Regional Hospital. But before we can get there, his office calls again and says, I've got some really bad news for you. So what is that? He said, we've reviewed Kim's uh, x-rays. She's also got a severe brain aneurysm in addition to her stroke she's had. 
Well, Betty and I were already worried to death about her condition with the stroke, and now we had this on top of us, and it was just, just unbearable almost. So we, we got to Memorial Regional Hospital. Several doctors looked at her and said, this case is really almost too complicated for us here. She needs to go to MCV Hospital. So we went to MCV. We met Dr. Cantwell, one of the fine surgeons down there. And he was able to this new process of coiling, they call it, where they run wires through your body and your brain. He was able to uh, halt the progress of her aneurysm and fix it so it wouldn't burst. So that was one of the things that was good. So after a while, she recuperated, went home, but she continued to have these many strokes. She'd be at home, her hands would go numb. She'd drop things, she'd be at work. She'd get dizzy, lose her balance. Well, this went on, she would be at home, down to MCV, they'd call us back home, back to MCV, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So, uh, unfortunately, this just continued on and on. In addition to dealing with many strokes and so forth and so on, Kim was a single parent with a job and a daughter in college she was trying to raise. But one day while Kim was at home, she had a 